All right, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to draw bones and ink bones. I'm gonna use this image, a dire wolf, right over here, and I'm gonna show you how to pencil it, how to sketch it out, all the way to inking with microns, pen and ink, uh, microns, fine liners, uh, statlers, um, secure uh, th those pins, okay? And then at the end result, we'll get something that looks like this, right over here. So, a little bit about me. My name is Walden Wong. I'm a comic book artist from Marvel and DC Comics. I do a lot of inking uh, for my professional work, so that's why I'm doing this ink piece. Uh, check out my website. It's WaldenWongArt.com. Uh, on my website, there's a lot of things that you can look at. Uh, uh, news, um, events, uh, pictures, and a store. A lot of things that you can look at. And if you enjoy these videos, please think about supporting me over on Patreon. My Patreon is Patreon.com slash WaldenWongArt. And over there, there's different tiers of showing support, as well as mentorship. So if you're an artist who's looking for mentorship about penciling, inking, lettering, coloring, or any of that good stuff, uh, check me out over there. So without further ado, let's see how I make this, this, this one right over here, into this. Alright, so the paper I'm going to be using is a Strathmore drawing paper. This one is 9 inches by 12 inches. Um, and I'm also going to be drawing this with um, these uh, regular pencils. This one's uh, my sketch pencil, and then this one's my mechanical pencil. And after I'm done drawing this, I'm gonna be using uh, Statler pigment liners. Uh, this comes in uh, different sizes, so I'll also be explaining the different sizes uh, as I use them. So I'm gonna get a reference image of a dire wolf. This one is the one that I'm gonna be drawing right over here. And here's the paper, I took one out, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sketch the head first. I'm probably gonna sketch it this way, because it, it feels, fills more space. Let me move this light on the side, and adjust this. So when, when I start sketching out, I'll, I'll sketch out the, the whole big basic shape for, first. So this um, stat, this is also made by Staller. This, mecha uh, this mechanical pencil is just like a, a really thick lead, almost the same thickness as a um, regular pencil, like one of these pencils, unlike a 0.05 mechanical pencil that has a smaller lead. But this one forces me to sketch lightly, so I don't really draw that dark. So as I'm drawing this, I do focus on the shape of the whole head first. Okay, So I'll, I'll sketch a lot of lines and then as I sketch lines, um, I'll go in there and I'll draw in the best fit line later. So right here, I'm just focusing on forms. Okay, and here's the eye, the socket. Here's a bone structure here. And you, you'll see that I'm doing a lot of, lot of little lines. Okay. Okay, I'm going to continue. And here's the inside of the mouth. And then here's the outside of the mouth. Okay, here's some teeth over here and some teeth here. And then I'm basically just scribbling. I'm just scribbling everything in there until it starts taking form. Can you move this over to the right here? Okay, here's the inside of this mouth. This one goes in here. Okay, and then a whole bunch of teeth here. And here's a little socket. Okay, just gonna go and look at everything. The circle here is a little triangle, another overlap of this. Okay. And then we have some bones over here. Okay, I'm gonna continue sketching. The more I sketch, the more I pick up details here. And then here is this part. This one protrudes in, comes back out like this. I remember one of the first bone drawings I ever did uh, when I was younger was in high school and it was um, a, a cow bone, an ox. And that was a good exercise. So this this reminds me of the time when I was doing pen and ink. Okay, right now I'm going to structure in where the teeth is going to be. Here's that cluster of teeth. I also look at, I also measure where this nose is and that little nostril where this teeth is. Okay, and now look at this cluster of teeth, which is from here to here. I'll just draw that as a rectangle, just for placement first. And then later on, I'll go in there and I'll do the math and divide everything out together. Here's this cluster. Right over here. I'll just draw that as a partial circle here and then here. This one starts right about here. See, here's the measurements right over there. So I'll start this here all the way to back here. That's that row. And this row, I'll curve up and down. So I'll start from here to here. I'll curve up to here, here, and to here. Actually, I'm going to move, I'm going to move this a little bit lower. I'm going to move that jaw a little bit lower. 
because I want to keep that same angle. Okay, so this angle goes down this way. There we go. Okay, this is a better angle. I'm going to erase the original sketch. Luckily, this is just a sketch. And this eraser is a neat eraser. Uh, it erases and keeps all the eraser dust. Unlike a plastic eraser, um, this just cleans a little bit better. Okay, so here, let's sketch this part. Okay, measure the teeth. This teeth is about from here to here. Here's the measurement, so that means I have to make this a little bit longer. And then this teeth is around here. Okay, and then the front teeth and then the back teeth. Back teeth from here. And then this teeth roughly to here. There. Okay. So now I have the basic, basic sketch of my dire wolf. Okay, I'm going to look for more shapes. This looks like a little circle over here. Some bone structures here. Okay, this one protrudes out, comes back in. There's a thickness here, and this round part. Okay, feel free to fast forward this video if you want to see me do the uh, the tightening uh, phase. Right now, I'm just sketching, and later on, I'm going to tighten up my sketch. Okay, a little more lines here. Okay, this one doubles up a line here. And then now, I'm going to start breaking up the teeth. We have this front tooth. Front tooth with this curve right here. Yeah, one of my patrons, he requested, well, then can you draw a dire wolf? I want to see your inking technique. So I've decided that I'm going to start drawing it in pencil first, just because because it's fun drawing things in pencil. And you can, when you're done, you can ink it and you can even color it. And then I'm doing the math right now, just to section off the teeth. And then we have one, two, three, four, five teeth. Five teeth here. I'll find the middle. The middle is right here. So that means I know the two larger teeth is going to be here and then here. And then just three right there. So I'm just going to put those as triangles for now. And then when I tighten them, I'll go back in there and then I'll put in more of the details. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teeth around here. I'll find the middle from here to here. The middle is about right over there. I'll section off the middle. And then I know that here, this one, it's going to be a large triangle right here and then we get the smaller triangle smaller triangle and then just four going this way so we have one teeth one tooth second one third and then fourth we see the inside of the bone the inside of the bone goes from here all the way to the bottom of this teeth and it goes out to here Okay, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, same thing, seven. We'll divide this in half. Half is about here. So half of that is roughly here. I'll also use other areas to uh, measure. And then we have one tooth, second one, third one. And then we have the four ones up here. We have one, two, three, four. We're just doing triangles now. And then we have this tooth, which is pointing at this one right over here. So I'll place that point like this and then we have one two three four five six teeth six teeth and then we'll break it in half so here's the middle and then i'll sketch this curve very lightly okay and then as i'm sketching i'm just placing everything in there and then here we have this tooth and then this one goes in here i'm going to stretch this okay now i'm going to start making those two tooth look a little bit more 3d i'll break it up into more shapes Okay, and then I'll look at uh, some of these points and these spikes that I see on the reference photo right here. Let me grab a pencil so we can uh, see that. Let me put this piece of paper underneath here. Okay, so all these little points, I'm just going to place that in here. Okay, then we have some of this. This one goes here. Okay, we have some of this. And we're going to do like a really detailed pen and ink uh, piece of artwork for this one. Here's a little bit a curve, another curve in here. Okay, and then I'm going to extend this a little bit longer. Okay, so far so good. Okay, I'm going to extend this tooth a little bit longer here. And 
as an artist, you can always go in there and take artistic freedoms and then adjust it to your style. So I'm going to look at the reference photo and then I'm going to adjust it a little bit to my style. Uh, so for some of you who don't know who what I do, I'm actually a comic book artist. I do work for Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Um, you can look at my website. It's waldenwallart.com. And there you see uh, some of the artwork that I've done for different publishers. Uh, so check that out. And then also I have a Patreon page. My Patreon is patreon.com slash wall wall art. And there are just different tiers to show support. So if you enjoy these videos, please think about um, supporting me there on Patreon. Now I'm looking at the inside of the bone. Here's the inside. And I'm following all these little bumps. Okay. Right over here. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. You see how all these scratchy lines, they just start to form as I'm adding more and more okay right here in this socket okay we'll move this back a little bit okay here's the outside line okay this one it's kind of nice um as an artist when you're drawing this it feel, almost feels like you're you're sculpting um the details in here okay i don't know should i draw i might as well just draw the cracks since i'm doing it anyway so some of the cracks i'm just gonna sketch and all this phase is just going in there and putting in the details Okay, and then here's another crack over here, another crack, and then some shadows over here, and here's the center, and then here's this outside. Okay, so we have this. Let me look, here's another strip, another strip that goes right here. And then this tooth, I'm gonna start breaking up. It almost looks like a little temple, like on the side and then on the top. So I'm just gonna start doing the same thing, a little triangle. And then for each one of those, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to switch over to my uh, mechanical pencil now. The mechanical pencil, well, I had it on my left hand. The mechanical pencil is just draws a little bit darker and it'll, it'll be a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to start on the left side just so my hand doesn't smudge uh, a lot of that. I'm going to go in here, press down. And then when I'm done drawing all this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there, uh, ink it. And then when I'm done inking, I'm going to erase everything in pencil. So it will be only the uh, the ink, the ink artwork. So I'm going to follow the curves. So now, now that all the sketches are done, I'm pretty much just drawing on top of my sketch. My sketch is basically my roadmap of where to draw the finer details. So when I'm drawing these smaller things, I'm going in there and I'm measuring. In. I'm also measuring and then I'm just looking at everything else in detail okay i don't have to worry about the whole layout i don't have to worry about proportion this is the drawing phase okay right here we add more and then see we at one two three four one two three four i'm going to move up one two three four and then this one gets closer and then when you're drawing you don't really need to follow your sketch line again it's like a roadmap one two three four five six one two three four five six this is your rope one two three four five six yeah I, I do a lot of counting when i'm drawing I, I this is when you're drawing this is your roadmap to draw you don't have to sketch out every you don't have to trace your lines okay we go here looks like there's a little crack over here so using my mechanical pencil i can see that the, my lines that I'm drawing, which is a little bit darker, and I can follow those. And there's some more cracks over here. Looks like when the bone was um, became a bone, it, they just cracked it. Okay, I'm going to continue going here. There's a little dip over here. Now, I'll try to maintain all those bumps as best as I can. Okay, so I'm, this one's a little bit too low. This one's a little bit too high. I'm just going to lower this a little bit. There we go. Lower this, and then I'm going to move this back up here, right over here. And then we have that little bump right over here. Okay, I'm going to go all the way around. And then any nuances that I see, I'm just going to start adding it in there. Here's this bump over here, which is this way. I'm going to have this go outside. I'm going to darken up this. And this one goes all the way to the center here, like this. And then here's the other side. And then I'm going to go around. Okay, I'll use my left hand to point at where I'm sketching. Okay, so when you're drawing this and you're following me to draw, you can also use the same method I'm using. This method I'm using is not just 
to draw like the dire wolf. You can also draw people's faces, the hands, cars, anything that you feel like you need to draw. So I'm pointing just so you can look at the left and look at the right and see what I'm drawing. Okay, I'm gonna go in it, go in there darker. And again, I'm still still sketching. When I start to draw, that's when I pick the very clean fine line. Okay, you may see me doing some shading as I'm drawing uh, in, in pencil. It's just for me to see where all the shadows and light sources are gonna be. Okay, here's a round part of this head. Tighten up that. Okay, and then we have this. You wanna follow through, this line follows through. There's some bumps here. And then this one goes up, almost like a fin. And then this one comes down like this and then as you go here these little curves and then i'm going to go here we're going to you know i'm going to have this go a little bit lower okay that, that was a little bit too high i'm going to have this one go all the way here okay i don't want that the, the distance was a little bit too close okay i'm going to erase that a little bit okay we come here curve down curve down give this a thickness curve down Go around here, curve up a little bit, and then make this rounded. And then we have this this part. Okay, I'm gonna give this line here, and then we see the bottom. The bottom goes over here. And there's a thickness right around there. And then we have the insides. Okay, now I'm gonna continue and work on the teeth. See, we already have the layout of where each tooth is, so I'm just gonna go in there and put in all the finer details. Okay, like this. Okay, and then right up from here, there's a little bit of a crack there. There's also a little bit of a crack here. This one goes around here, this one goes here. There we go. And then now we have, this. Is, there's also a back tooth there. So we're gonna draw the front side I'm gonna draw these little tips. Like this, and then this one overlays underneath. And then here, I think the gums, this is the inside of the teeth. And then here's the, the sharp points, and this is, this is where the gums are. One of the fun things about being an artist, and when you're drawing things, you get to study. So as, as we're drawing as artists, we're actually studying parts of what we're drawing. Like if you're drawing a flower, you begin to remember how a flower looks in the future. So if you need to draw it again, um, it just comes uh, naturally. Okay, I wanna create some of these details over here, some of this points. Okay, and then I wanna go over here and create some of those folds, looks like folds. Okay, there's a little shadow part, a little shadow here, a little bump here. I'm just gonna place all those there and then I'm just gonna do some shading just so it helps me separate, it helps me see everything a little bit better. Okay, so we have that bone. Okay, and then we have this little circle. I don't know what, what this circle, I know a human skull also has a little little circle over there. So I'm gonna fill this in. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna go in here and darken up this, this area. Okay, just so I can see a little bit better. Okay, put in all the little details. Okay, and then also darken up this area. Again, um, I'm shading this uh, as if I'm drawing something for comics, but then um, later on when I ink it, it's gonna be all um, line work. Okay, we're gonna go back in here and work on this shape. Uh, my left hand, I'm pointing at the areas that I'm, that I'm drawing in, so you all can see. I'm gonna start with this teeth. I'm gonna start with this, this teeth over here. I'm gonna come up here, work on the points in it, so a lot of times um, when I'm when when I have um, like friends or students or the you know or anyone the drawing they'll look at something and say wow that's a lot of details how am I going to work on all those details what I like to do is I I like to break it down into one large shape and then I'll break it to smaller shapes and then I work on those smaller shapes and then it's actually just drawing a little triangle one at a time on each of the shapes. Okay. So it's not as daunting as one big task. Um, so instead of me looking at this as one whole canvas, I see this as one little triangular canvas, and I'm trying to fit everything within that little, little part right over here. 
Okay, and then we have this one, this little bit here. We're trying to make it look at uh, 3D. There's a little bump here, another bump over here, and then this one looks like little little temples. And then we have the back, and then all this is kind of dark. And here, there's a little bit of shadow on the majority of this. And a lot of times I tell students, um, when you're drawing, um, try not to draw what you know, just but instead draw what you see. After you draw what you see and you're used to it, then go back and then draw it on your own. Okay, you want to have this back line. Now I'm just going to draw this this tooth over here. I'm going to sketch this side. We're going to start again, those little canvases, little shapes that I'm going in there and adding. One at a time, here's my next canvas. My next tiny canvas and I'm just going in there and adding those little bits of details. Try to make it look 3D. Um, so when I'm when I draw, usually I draw with basic shapes, which is a circle, square, triangle, and cylinder. And so in my head, I'm just breaking these down into all those little smaller shapes. Okay, so this is like a triangle, except I'm giving this a side. Okay, and then I'm adding these little shadows over here. Then here's this side little triangle here, each of them, the center have a little bit of triangle. And then we have, you can see that's a large one. Let's see, one, one, two, three, four. Uh oh, I think I made um, one too many. I have to redraw that. <coughs> okay, so this is the large one. And then we have four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna work on the large one first. Here's this one. Okay, and then here's this one. Draw this to the side, and then here's a little bump. And then now I'm gonna go backwards. Go at these little bits right here, the little bump here. And then we're gonna go over here at that little side and the bump here. Okay, and then here, like so. Okay. Just just little pits, little, little almost like fire, fire or pieces of um ice. Okay. One, two, three, and then I'm gonna end. See, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and then I'm gonna end this one. This one, I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. Yeah, this one, this one, this one needs to be a little bit further back. You can move this one back here. Okay. Yeah, the drawing phase usually takes a little bit long, but the inking phase, that's that's the fun phase. That's when um when I'm drawing and I'm just coasting and everything's just very easy to draw. And again, uh, at the bottom of the team, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. I'm just going to scribble all of that in with this mechanical pencil. Uh, with, what's this? Sakura. Sakura.07. Um, if any of you want to get any of the supplies I use, I add links below this video description so you can also check that out. And I want to thank all my Patreons who um, support me over my Patreon. This one was um, Daniel Bedoy's um, request. So uh, thank you for having me um, draw this. Okay, here's a little bit of a dark area here. And then here's a little bit of dark area here. And then we have this. Let me make this go here. Okay, now I'm starting to darken up my lines a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to Work on this shape. This one overlaps here. This one overlaps. I'm just going to give this a little bit of shadow. These little bumps, which I'm going to add in here. I'm just going to shade it like this. Okay. So far, I pretty much have everything already. I'm just going to go in there and tighten up uh, some of the areas that I can't see. I'm just going to give it a little bit of shading to help separate. Now that I'm done um, sketching the line workout, I'm going to use my regular pencil. Okay, and then I'm just going to look at all the shadow areas. I'm just going to shade like this. Again, I'm going to be inking this, but this just helps me separate all the shadow areas. Here, like this. Okay, just to give it a little bit more detail. Uh, this side has more shadows. Uh, this side this side has more shadows. Uh, the light source is coming from here. Okay, light source is just was brighter there. Okay, there's a, a few textures over here. So I'm just going to scribble some of those in. Uh, scribble some of these uh, rounded textures. And I'll go back in there and I'll ink it uh, a little bit later. Right here, which was darker. Okay, we fill that in all the way to maybe roughly right over here. Okay, and then here. And then there's a little bit of shadow here. So I'm going to start using the side of my pencil just to fill in all the areas in. Okay, we have a little bit of a texture around here. 
Okay, and then here we have a little bit of a darker shade here. This area is really dark. Okay, this area is really dark. The bottom of the bone right here. So I'm going to darken that. The backbone is going to be also a little bit darker, a little bit of shadow back there, a uh, shadow back here, uh, this curve right here, a little bit shadow at that here. This side, darken up here. Okay, I'm looking at the light source and where's darker, where's lighter. There's these little bumps here. We're not going to follow all the bumps, otherwise it's going to take uh, forever. Uh, you don't want to be watching a five hour, oh, maybe. Actually, I've actually done like a three hour video on some 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 of you actually watch it so thank you for watching those i had i did a three hour video on how to make comics uh, how to draw uh, how to ink and how to color and that's one of my longest videos that i uh, had on youtube and i didn't think anyone was going to look at it and people actually look at it it's, it's a like a really highly viewed video okay i'm going to continue adding um, some of the shading also on the inside here there's also some shading on this side some little bumps here okay so as i'm shading it's slowly starting to take form okay and then those textures i'll just start to ink that later a little bit darker here a little bit here there i think i have everything okay so this is good i'm gonna add some shadows over here uh, the bone isn't flat so you want to add some textures in between the bone so it looks like there's um, some kind of rough ruffle ruffles over there Okay, so we have some here, some really dark areas. Okay, so now we have everything drawn. I'm going to start taking, taking my uh, Microns, uh, these Statler Pig Miners. Uh, I could just, it comes in a set, uh, which is kind of cool. This one has like a, it's like a little carrying case. And then when you want to use it, you just open up this and then flip it over. And, and then you can just put it on your desk like this. Okay, so there's... This one has uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, all the way to number 8. Uh, I work with number 8 right here as the holding line. The holding line is the outline of the object. So I'm going to take the number 8. Uh, usually when I ink, um, I'll either ink with a, a crow quill or a brush, like a brush like this. But in this case, I'm just going to use completely uh, microns here. So um, for the holding line, holding line is the outside of the, the skeleton, the object. And then I'm going to go in here and start inking in some of the outlines. Now, this is the stage where you want to be as accurate as you can. You want your lines to be smooth. I'm not even going to follow this. I'm just going to keep this here in case I need to look at it for reference. But this is where you want your lines to not be sketchy and to be as clean as you can. Okay. Okay, so what I'm making um, earlier, when you saw me drawing it, I'm, I'm just going in there and, uh, you know, I don't really turn the paper, but when I'm inking, I do kind of turn the paper a little bit. Let me move this to the side so we can see more uh, of the artwork. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this over right here and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we all can see a little bit better. There we go. Okay. And then here, I'm just going to start inking in all the little details. Okay, there's some on the outside. I'm just going to follow the lines. And I'm trying not to overlap lines uh, at this point. I want everything to flow nicely. Okay. And then here's more of those smaller teeth. Just going to go in here. And then as you go towards the more on the side, I'm going to angle this so you can, can see a little bit better. We angle this camera. Okay, so right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, yeah, like, like this is good. Okay, there we go. So one, two, three, and then two more smaller teeth right over here. And then a smaller, thinner one like this. Okay. And then we're going to draw the side of the thief. And then we're going to have this going out here. And then there's another bone right here which just goes around. And then I'm just going to draw some of the cracks here. Like that. Okay. For the curves, I do turn it like this. And then I want to give that curve as nice of a smooth line as I can. 
So we have that curve. And then there's a little bit of a bump over here. I'm going to create that. Okay. And then I'm going to continue drawing that line. Okay. So this line is in the front. I'm just going to draw this line right over here. And then I complete this line on the back so I don't overlap it. Okay. This one goes up, comes back down like this. Okay. This line follows through. So even if my pencil line is not following through, I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Okay. Here's some of the outside, some of the outside line right over here. I'm going to create those bumps. Okay. Kind of freehand and not worry about having a smooth line like this. Okay. Now lines that are smooth, I try to go get in there and make it a little bit more smoother. So we have this line, we're going to ink this. So I'm not doing any of the rendering yet. Right now I'm only inking in all the, um, all the, all the holding lines. And then I'll go back and do all the rendering later. So we have these little bumps here. Again, I'm arcing my hand as if I'm using my wrist like a compass. Okay. This way I can get a nice smooth arc. Okay. We have this one. Okay. I'm just going to make this go over here a little bit. And then here's the inside. Like this, I'm just gonna make this go down here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna have this one like this. Okay, and then now we're gonna have some of this tooth here, and then we have the outside, these little points here. And I'm gonna continue, there's a little a bit of a bump there. And there's that, and then we have the tooth, each of the tooth. Again, just the holding line, not doing any of the insides yet. Just getting all that out of the way. And then when I do render, I'll go back in there and I'll start adding the in, in, inner sh inside shapes. Like this. Here's another point here. Like this. Okay, now continue. I'm going to keep everything as fluid as I can. Like this. And then here's the, the bigger bigger teeth in the back. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm gonna work on the teeth in the front. Okay, we're gonna work on, maybe, uh, we're gonna work on the one that's closest to us, which is this one. Like that, I don't want it to be too sharp. I'm imagining this tooth is kind of like decayed and in all these years, it's just kind of um, rounded off. Uh, if I was drawing like a fresh animal with um, sharp teeth, I'll make that really sharp. But with, with this one, I'll try not to make it root that sharp. Okay, and here's this tooth. Okay, and then this one overlaps this way. Like so. And then now they start getting close to each other. Right over here. This one goes here. And then this one. And then we have this one that bumps up. Like so. And then we have the other canine tooth. So we get the bottom side here. And again, I'm using the number eight. And then um, I'm starting with the biggest number and I'll work my way down. Okay. And then we're going to work on this part of the tooth over here. Okay. We're going to have this shape. Okay. And then we have. The next one, I'm just going to build up one at a time. Again, each each of the outlines, I'm not worried about the inside yet. I'll come back to that later. It's just like sketching, but um, I'm drawing it with ink. I'm doing all the bigger stuff first, and then I go back in there and I'll do all the, the smaller stuff later. One, two, three, four. Here's the fourth teeth. Here we go. Follow all those little nuances and details and curves and spikes as best as you can. Like so. Okay, like this, and then it starts getting smaller. Here we go, and then here's the smallest one. It kind of points over here. And then we have the back side of this, okay? So we have all of these, like that. And then I'm gonna draw the tooth on this side, starting here. And then we have the next one. OK, 
Yeah, so I'm just going to continue following through. You want to get, and it gets larger as we get uh, back there to the bottom, to this largest tooth. Okay, we have this one. This one's the largest one here. And just a little bump. And then when it get, it's starting to get, it's going to start to get smaller. And then we have this other one, which is um, a smaller one, all the way back here. Okay. After that, I'm going to draw the side, the inside skull, which starts right here. And we're going to follow that curve. I'll try not to make a tangent. And I'm just just, just going to go all the way here. Tangent is when there's a line that's sharing another line. Uh, when doing artwork, we try not to, like, this line, I don't want it to hit that point exactly at the point. Uh, if I hit that point, that, that's creating tangent. So even if the reference photo has a tangent, I go in there and I change it up a little bit, just so it looks a little bit uh, more fluid. Okay, and then here's the bottom of the um, skull. A little dent. I'm going to have this go here, and then this one follows through here. And this one has a little bit of a bump over there. I'm just going to draw those in. And then we have the outside line. And again, I'm going in there. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can with those lines. And the skull over here is uh, pretty smooth. And we have this part. And we have this little curve. And now I'm just going to adjust this one back a little bit. I'm going to move this bone back here. Even though my sketch is over here, I'm just going to adjust it. I, I think it's supposed to be better over here. Okay, I'm going to use my regular pencil and just kind of sketch some of the adjustments that I've done and move this back a little bit. Okay, so I can see it. Okay, move this back a little bit. Okay, and again, uh, you don't have to trace your lines. Uh, as an artist, you want to go in there and find the line that works the best. You want to go here, this one goes all, all the way up here, get that smooth line. And then here, we're just going to loop back like this. And then this one loops back this way. And then we have the rest of the bone uh, right here. And, and then we have the back of the head. Back of the head right here. And we don't really see that much on this side. And then here's this side of the bone. We're going to have the inside and then maybe around there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, when I look at the reference photo, it's, it's kind of dark and it, I don't see any free space. So I'm just going to leave that like this. And then here's the inside eye socket. I'm going to draw this part. Okay, there's a little bit of a bump here. So I create that bump. Okay, and then I follow through on the outside of the line like this. And then now I start breaking it up into the 3D shapes. Okay, there's a line that goes like this. And then here... This one goes around down here. And then here, I'm gonna create that curve right over here. So I, I can even go this way. I think I'm, I'm gonna go this way, just so I can see where the line's going. Like that. And then we have a little bit of a triangle bump here. This one goes around here. And then we have these lines. So I'm gonna start uh, breaking up uh, more of the shapes. Okay, so right here, we're going to start drawing this line very thin. Okay, that bone structure goes all the way here. Okay, I'm going to create these little cracks. Okay, I'm still using the 0 .08, 0 .8 right over here, this, this size. I'm going to create this line. Okay, there's also a little circle over here. Like this. Okay. So far, uh, so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with how everything's turning out. Uh, some of this line, I'm just going to have this line, draw this line. And then as I'm going here, I'm going to ease up very lightly. So even though you're using a micron, uh, you should still be able to draw some, some of those lines. Uh, some of those lines, the heavier lines, I'm just going to continue using. Okay. So like I look here, some of the heavier lines, I'm going to keep both of them in the screen so you, we can see both. Some of those heavy lines... Uh, I'm going to go in there and start adding those darker shapes. So here, just kind of squiggle it in there and then kind of crack it and just follow through like this. And there's some more cracks. So I'm just going to use the 08 just to fill those in. Like that. 
Okay, some of the black marks, just using some of those details that I have in there. Fill these in. Okay. And some of the tooth, the teeth, which is dark, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. I'm not going to use a brush to fill it in. I'm just going to render everything in uh, when I do this piece. Okay, um, the majority of the black that I'm using will be um, this uh, size 08. Okay, I'm going to look at uh, the reference photo in any area that's really heavy and dark. I'm just going to use this to just make it a little bit thicker. Okay. So right now I'm choosing areas that's really dark and I'm just making it thicker. Okay. Because we don't want to have everything to have a really thin line weight. And then here's this, the side of this here a little bit. Okay, some shadows. Uh, this tooth, I'm just going to add that piece over there. See, we have another, another piece right here. And then this one's not so dark, so I add a little bit. This one has two sections, looks like. So I'm just going to fill those in. And then back here we have another two section. Okay. And then some of the insides, which is really dark. I'm going to fill those in, make it a little bit thicker. Okay, and then here's this side. It's really dark here. We, don't, we won't worry about any of the backgrounds. We're just going to work on um, the skull itself. Here's another bone structure. Okay, so that's all the teeth there. Make sure when you're inking, um, you don't go over and touch any areas that's uh, not completely dry. Otherwise, you're going to smudge it. So microns, it does smudge uh, if you're not careful. So some of these lines. Right there. We also have these little loops over here. Okay, this tooth is a little bit darker. Okay. Then here I'm going to add some of the sides. Okay, and then I'm focusing on which areas are dark. And I'm just going to press down a little bit harder. Okay, so those of you who has microns, uh, fine liners, um, statlers, um, uh, pigma liners, you can use the same thing. I call them microns because they all kind of, you know, they're almost the same. They just have different names. I'm going to work on here. Okay, here's this tooth. Give that dark shadow. Give this a dark shadow. Okay, some of these loops over here. Make this really dark. Okay, this one's dark. Uh, some of the insides here. Go back in here and darken up some of those. And then I'll go, I'll go back in there later and I'll shade everything in. Then some shadows here, another darker part here, and a darker part on the bottom. Okay, and then this part's darker. We have this part. Let's see. We also have this part that's really dark. We're taking up that line a little bit. Uh, it's called line weights. Uh, when you have lines that are thick and lines that are small, um, go in here and darken up this. This helps create the form. This part is going to be really dark, but I'm just going to make this line a little bit darker. There's a little bit of a line over here. So here. Okay. This part's really dark, so I'm just going to dark up here. But I'm going to also do some rendering over there, so I don't want it to be too dark. Okay. There's also a really heavier line right here. So I'll darken up that. I'm going to come back to the front and work on the teeth over here. Uh, this side's a little bit darker. Okay, so now it's starting to take form, this uh, the drawing of uh, the Star Wolf. Ink this piece, uh, add some shadows, um, just try to create all the darker parts first. Okay, and then later, uh, when I start rendering, that's going to be the fun part. Uh, this is the part where everyone's going to be waiting for and just to see how I approach uh, inking. Uh, so a little bit about me. I've been inking for a very long time. I've been inking comics. Um, majority of the collectors who read comic books knows my work as a comic book inker. And, but not a lot of them know that I know how to draw professionally as a comic book artist. I just do a lot of inking. Uh, once in a while, I'll do some penciling. I'll do some in uh, inking. I'll do some coloring. I'll do some lettering. But I'm more known for my inking. But that doesn't mean that I don't know how to pencil. Uh, all good... Um, Artist that knows how to ink uh, knows how to pencil as well. Okay, here's a little bit of a dark part. So this one looks like a little, 
like a watermelon seed over here. Okay, there's also some dark parts over here. And here is this dark part. Okay, we have this little bit. Okay, we're going to have that line. We continue that line. I'm going to break up this line because you, you, you see that line, but it's not really completely uh, fluid all the way. I'm going to have this. Okay, looks like I have everything. I'm just going to darken up this line and darken up this line. Let's see if there's any other lines that I can add in. Okay, so some of this uh, outer line of the back of the skull. I'm create that line right here. And this skull looks like it's almost kind of coming out this way. And then we have that crack. So that crack, I'm just going to stipple, stipple draw. Stipple draw. Like that. Okay, this one goes this way. Kind of prick up the line. Okay, and then we have another line here. Again, I'm just using the reference as a reference. And then when I start drawing, uh, that's when I start doing all the finer details. Okay, uh, some of the stippling I can come back to later. Okay, just find the shape. This part is really dark over here. There's a little bit of a, a spike, a little bit of spike here. I'm gonna go contour around there. Just make this a little bit thicker. Looks like this is the dark, darkest part. I'm also gonna make this a little bit thicker in here, and I'll render out uh, from here. Okay, there's a little bit of dark shade here. Let's see any other areas that I can uh, darken up. Okay, just a little bit here. Okay, there's also another line right over here. This is the inside structure of the bone. There we go. I'm not going to draw that stick. So now that I have everything, I'm going to start rendering next. Let me make sure I capture as many lines as I can. Any other cracks? There's another crack over here. Get that in there. Uh, if I miss any cracks, I can always go back and then add it a little bit later. This one goes here. Okay, good. And now I have that. I'm going to switch from the 0.8 to the next the next uh, smallest size from the 0.8, and that is a 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is right here. And the 0.5, I'll look at all the darkest areas from the reference photo, and I'm starting, I'm going to start uh, hatching outwards. So here, uh, maybe this one, I'm going to start hatching a little bit of texture here. And all of the really dark areas, I'm going to start hatching like that, okay? So there's, there's also some cracks over here. I'm going to draw that crack. Draw this crack here. And we start going into the dark areas. And then as I go darker, I'm going to go have those lines go a little bit closer to each other. Okay, and I'll also be cross-hatching a little bit later. Okay, but right now I'm just focusing on all the areas that has that really thicker line. So right on the head up here, I'm going to add some cross-hatching like this. And also here, there's also well, just some hatch lines. This one goes all the way up to there. Okay. Uh, underneath this socket, where it's really dark, I'm going to start drawing those lines. Now, when I'm inking these hatch lines, uh, what I'd like to do is I'll keep those lines parallel to each other, and I want them to be spaced apart evenly from each other, unless I want them to fade into a dark, dark area. Okay, some darker areas right here. I'm going to start, uh, and I'll try to contour with the shape of the object that I'm uh Shading in. And then after I do the initial uh, hatch lines, I will go back and I'll cross hatch. Okay, like here, I can do some cross hatching here. I'll probably do some more cross hatching just to give it more of a tone later. Okay, some darker lines over here. I'm just going to hatch some of those in. Okay, and then this line just continues all the way here. Okay, there's a lot of squiggly lines over here. So this texture, I'll just usually do like a stippling pattern. Okay, some stipples that are close together, some that are further apart. Okay, I'm going to have this go inside here. 
Um, so I'm stippling here. I'm going to look at all the areas that has more hatch lines. I'm going to start hatching here. Now, as I go closer to this area, which is darker, I'm going to space them closer to each other. Like this. Now I'm going to start getting closer to each other. So the negative space, the white space in between the lines, is getting thinner and thinner. Just so it creates like a light to a dark. Okay, this part is really dark and I can't really see what's back there. So I'm just going to hatch one line first. Just to get some hatching over there. Done. Okay, and then here I also have some kind of hatching. I'm going to follow through. See, another area that's really dark is uh, around here, all the way to there. So I'm going to start here. And then as I go up, I'm going to start coming into it this area okay gonna do some hatch lines over here and again contour to the shape of your object as best as you can when you're doing some of these uh, texture and rendering okay so we have some hatch lines going this direction for the tooth I'm also going to start doing some of the shadows for the tooth just to give it a uh, more form okay so uh, I'm going to work on the bottom of the right side okay and some textures here okay I'm um, some shadow rendering directly underneath uh, all the tooth so I'm just going to go one direction space them evenly Space them evenly and make sure there's some pattern going on. One of the um, publishers that I worked with uh, a long time ago in DC, he said, when you're inking, the best way to do good inking is as if you're drawing those lines uh, so fluidly that no one sees that there's a like an extra line or like a like a line that doesn't belong there. Uh, so it looks like kind, of, kind of like a computer printout of a gray area. So that's one way to do like really good um, hatching and cross hatching. Okay. Uh, I'm also gonna add some sh shadows underneath here. Cause that, when I look here, it's lighter, it's darker and it's lighter. So right about here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of hatch lines and then it'll slowly dissipate. So when it dissipates, those lines just gets wider and further apart. Like this, this wraps around. Like this and then we have some of those darker texture uh, let's start hatching some of this rendering here and some of this rendering here um, heavy shadows on this side so I'm going to use this to ink this in okay and then we have some shadows coming on this side let's see what other shadows we have some hash lines over here so I'm going to move over to the point this one's point five the next one I'm going to move over to is point three. As it gets smaller, it's going to be more detailed rendering. I'm going to go in there and start adding in all the um, textures of, um, I'm going to try to keep doing this uh, in one one way. Uh, I'm going to move this over. Don't really need, I'm going to put this on the side so we don't really need this anymore. So we can focus on just the uh, inking technique right over here. And I'll try not to turn the page. Usually I do turn the page a lot. Okay, so let me put this aside, put this tab a little way. Okay, so I'm going to start adding some of the shadows here. So we have this shadow coming on this side. Actually, let me angle it so we can see what I'm working on. Let me get everything in focus. There we go. We will space evenly here. Okay, there were some shadows here. I'll contour this way. Okay, and this one I'll contour this way. Okay, so some of these shadows is in between teeth. Like this. Okay, and then we also have some of the shadows that were underneath um, the bone structure where the gums belong. So we're going to add that shadow by hatching. Okay, 
So there's a line, there's a shadow there. I'm going to separate some of the bones. Okay, I'm going to start adding some of the under bottom, at the bottom of the bottom of the skull. Okay, bottom of this skull. Okay, and then this one goes around. Now we have the teeth here. Okay, and then I'm going to continue working on some of the cross hatching here. And now we have this tooth. I'm just going to turn, I'm going to zoom back a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hatch these lines going this direction. Okay, and slowly I just space them evenly as best as I can. And then while I'm doing this, I know everything's on the screen. I am looking at the reference photo just to see where the shadows are, uh, where all the gray areas and where, where's dark shadow and where's light shadow. And then I'll add it in there. So this time, uh, this part, just take your time on it. Uh, don't rush. Uh, just make sure all the details are there. This is the fun part. Uh, a lot of artists that uh, I know, they when they're drawing, they're trying to rush and get everything done. But once you're done, you know, you, you don't really need to draw anymore. What's the fun in rushing the project? Um, always enjoy the process of um, doing your drawing and doing your inking. Uh, this way you can enjoy the process a little bit longer. Because uh, that's, that's the fun part. Unless you have a deadline and you need to get your work done and finished, that's when you... Um, need to draw a little bit faster uh, just to get the work done okay we have the bottom of this teeth here i'm just going to cross hatch and then separate the bottom of the tooth some of the shadow rendering on this side then more here okay so we have the tooth is coming along fine and then i'm going to work on the bottom tooth over here we're going to do some uh, cross hatching i'm just going to turn it this way just to give it more of a shade over there. Okay, I'm gonna go on this side of the tooth. We'll come back uh, to do some of the dark areas. Okay, now I'm gonna cross hatch some of this. Okay, I'm gonna continue uh, following through some of this tooth over here. Okay, and some of this area. Now, if I want a certain area to be darker, all I have to do is just cross hatch. Like this. Okay. Cross hatch the bottom so it'll be thicker. Okay, we're gonna ink some of these lines. Okay, I'm gonna separate the top of the bone to the side of the bone. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of a shadow on this side and it starts to dissipate. So right over here. I'm going to hatch those lines, again, space them evenly. You want them to start in the right place and kind of end in the right area and slowly disappear. And you kind of go smaller and you lighten up the line. Okay, I'm going to go here, some of the shadows over here. Okay, I'm going to continue doing some of the teeth rendering. There's some shadows here. Like this, and then there's this shadow. Cross-hatched if you want a certain area of the teeth to be darker. This part's dark here. Okay, I'm going to cross-hatch over here a little bit. Some of the insides. The teeth is probably going to take the longest because there's there's so many of the teeth there. Uh, some of the outside of the bone, there isn't really that much detail, so it's not really that bad. Okay, we continue doing the side of the teeth. Okay, here is this side, here's this side. Okay, some of the inside of the teeth. Okay, we're gonna have maybe a, the top part, cross hatch. Actually hatch and then cross hatch. And then we have some of this side. Okay, and then let's see what other here. So I'm gonna add some little bit of a hatch lines on the bottom of this to show the form. Okay, and then on this tooth, I'm going to start adding rendering on this these tooth over here. And 
and just take your time and enjoy this. Uh, if you're following along with me, please comment down below this video so I know how you're doing. Um, when you're done, I you know maybe post a link to one of your sites that I can look at it. I would like to see how you do on your artwork. Um, so all of this is just um, really basic drawing, basic uh, hatch lines. Um, you don't really need to worry about dipping the brush to your bottle of ink or feeding your crow quill. And you're just using a micron uh, like this and just adding uh, texture lines and shadows in there. So yeah, if you worked on this, um, put a link below the video description and so I can look at it. Um, I always respond back to everyone that um, comments on my video as best as I can. Sometimes comments are made and then I don't get a notification and I don't know that comment and I miss it. But for the most part, I usually do respond to everyone that makes a comment or posts or asks questions. It's one of the fun things about YouTube that I can interact with um, people and help them out with artwork and things like that. <clears throat> Okay, some of the shadows. Okay, I'm gonna look over here. There's a little bit of shadow coming in this way, so I cross hatched another direction. So yeah, it's slowly taking form, but there's still a lot of uh, work to do. So I'm gonna start hatching here. And the more I cross hatch, the more um, sh uh, shape you know that this object. Uh, you'll see the shape. So I'll add a little bit of a little tick lines on the bottom of the object. This is these, these are my favorite part uh, to do, like these little lines over here. Okay, we have some of this line, and then as I go further back, it's going to get a little bit thinner and closer to each other. And then we have this outside. Okay, and then I'm going to go in here and start um, cross-hatching this part. Now, I do want this inside bone to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to start um, hatching uh, in different directions, almost like a basketing technique, uh, just to make it a little bit darker back there. So I'm going to go here, just go this direction. Okay, and then here I'm going to start the same direction, go all the way down to the dark area. And this technique is cross-hatching, basketing, um, a few techniques together. Uh, what I'm doing is just add, adding more lines just to push that cross-hatching a little bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna go in here like this, and then I'm just gonna continue adding bits and pieces into different directions. When you do different directions, it starts to create a tone, okay? So the little bit that I adjust, it just makes it a little bit darker. See that? It just, just gives it a more of a darker tone. And then I can always go in there and add a little bit more. You can do smaller strokes, you can do larger strokes. Uh, right here, I'm gonna add some going this way. Okay, I'm also gonna um, hash this out and make that kind of bleed out and become soft as it's going out. Okay, I'm gonna go maybe this direction. And when I'm doing this, it's all about spacing everything evenly uh, together. I don't scribble, so I try to be as neat as I can. You can you can you can scribble if you like, but I I, I usually don't scribble. I like being uh, neat with the lines. Okay, then I'm gonna add more. And if I want it to be darker, I just keep building up on that. I don't use um, a black brush to fill everything in because I want everything here to be a line work. Okay, so some of this texture shadows comes out here. So I'm just gonna have that kind of run out like this. Okay, and as it runs out, I'm going to go back in there and cross-hatch some of the areas. Just so it's a consistent, smooth, um, gradual run out like this. Okay, we're going to have some of the little lines coming here. Okay, looks like there's another shadow that goes from here to here. So I'm just going to hatch that in. And I make sure I look at my pencil rendering to see where I'm hatching. 
this. I'm also going to make this a little bit darker on this side. So I'm going to use this size pin. I'm just going to go in there again, space them evenly. Okay, right now I'm not worried about textures. The only thing I'm concentrating on is the values, the light source, the shadows, uh, the medium values, uh, the light values and things like that. I'll come back and do the shadows, I mean the textures a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to go in here and add some of these tick marks around this bone structure. Okay, and then just a little bit of a bone coming this way. So I'm, at, I'm just going to go a little light. And as I go here, it gets, becomes a tip. A really, really sharp tip like that. Okay. And then this part, we have some grays coming this way. Okay, we have some of these lines here. And then we also have some grays. I'm going to bring back the reference photo so some of you can also look at it if you wanted to look at the reference photo. Here's the reference. Okay, that was, I had two of the shoes from. I'm going to move move this back out. Okay, we're going to look at both the reference photo and I'm going to draw this at the same time. Let me zoom back a little bit. There we go. Now we see both of them. Okay, I'm going to continue. Let me zoom in. Okay, it looks like we have everything on screen. Okay, and then I'm just going to start uh, hatching in. Any areas I see a little bit of grays, I'm just going to hatch it in first. Uh, just to get all those placed down, okay? And then when I do this hatch line, I try to start the line kind of beginning in one area and then ending in another area. I try to be consistent. Here, and then we have some cross hatching here. Okay, and then we have a little bit of a graze coming down this way. And when, you, when you're doing this hatching and cross hatch, there's really no set rules about what direction you want to do. So as I'm doing this, I'm going uh, many directions, but I'm just looking at the different tones, uh, where it's lighter and where it's darker. Okay, well, some of this area is dark over here, so I'm just going to add some of, I'm going to add this crack right over here. And then I'm just going to add this as a cross hatch over here. Okay, some of this cross hatching here. And then some cross hatching here because because it's really dark over there. Okay, we're gonna add some of those textures and we're gonna hatch up this way. Okay, and just like how I did this in, in the back, I'm gonna darken up some of these lines over here. So I'm gonna start cross hatching here. And as I go closer to the black area, I'm going to have those cross hatch lines um, be closer to each other. Okay, we have that. I'm going to have some cross hatch lines go in this direction. Okay, I'm going to go maybe go out this direction and we turn this so my hand can draw that line a little bit better. Again, just gradual, gradual color change, uh, gradual tone change underneath the teeth. Okay, there's some cross hatching right over here. And some of this, I don't really see it in my pencils. Uh, I'm just looking at the reference and then I'm just adding it as I'm go, as I'm going. Okay, some shadow rendering here. And the more you add, the more it takes form. Okay, I'm going to add some rendering around here. Again, no set rules of what direction. Uh, you do want to contour with the shape of the object that you're working with. And space them evenly as best as you can. Okay, we're going to add some shadows on this side. I'm just going to add it like this. We're going to add more. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to add some shadows in the circle. You see how dark that circle is? So right over here, we're going to start a little bit. And then we're going to come in here and then kind of make that whole part 
darker by giving it that tone, space them evenly. And if I want the top part to be a little bit darker, I just cross hatch that area like this, and I'll cross hatch the bottom area like so. And then we're going to continue adding some tone here. It looks like there, I need a little bit more tone, so I'm just going to have this come out. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, a little bit of tone on this side, underneath here. Because I look here, it's, it's whiter on top and there's a little bit of a yellow. So I'm just gonna hatch some of this here. So I'm usually, when I'm doing this hatching technique, I'm flicking my hands really quickly, uh, just so those lines are a little bit more consistent and straighter. Okay, it looks like there's some shadows over here. So I'm just gonna hatch some of those shadows in here. And again, I'm still using the number three. Actually, I can ink the whole thing with number three. I don't really need to have a smaller, but we'll, we'll just, we'll try to use a little bit of every um, uh, size of the pins, the, the different sizes that we have here. Okay, so there's some shadows here. So I'm just gonna hatch those in. Any areas that you see that has a shadow, just go ahead and hash those in first. Uh, focus on the darker areas and then come back and then do the textures later. Okay, I'm going to add some of this here. Uh, this one contours around that bone structure, so I'm going to add some of those going this direction. Okay, and then the bone here, there's a little bit of shadow right over here. So I'm going to add that tone. Okay, and then I'll cross hatch a little bit. Okay, and then add a little bit of a thick line. I still want this area to be darker. So I'm going to go in there and start uh, hatching a little bit more. Okay, and I'll cross hatch. Uh, when I cross hatch, I try to uh, look for a different direction. Okay, again, I'm focusing on evenness, the spacing of the lines. Okay, if I want it to be darker, I go back there and hatch a little bit more, but I look for another direction. Okay, so right here, I'm going to make this darker and I space them a little bit more evenly and closer. Okay, if I want it to be even darker, I'll turn it a little bit, turn a little bit, and I'll do the same thing. I'll decide how much of a hatch distance I want those lines to be. Okay, and then I want this line, maybe I'm going to make um, this one for contour this direction. So I'll start this way. And I'll go all the way across. And the more I start hatching in there, the darker those lines will be. Okay, I want this area to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to start uh, hatching in this direction. Okay, and some of these darker parts, I'm just going to add a little bit of a hatch line there, just to give it a little bit of a tone. Again, I'll come back and do those stippling dots later. I just want to give this bone structure a different tone right over here. Again, I'm spacing them evenly. I'm trying to start that line in a control place and I want to end that line also in a control place. Okay, I'm gonna cross hatch here to make this, I'm gonna contour this direction just, just to follow the form of the bone. Okay, like this. Okay, uh, I'm going to cross hatch this way just to make this pop out uh, a little bit more. And this one is shorter distance, but again, space evenly. Okay, let's see what other areas. Uh, right here, a little bit of cross hatching here. I can feel that my hand is still, this area is kind of wet. So 
Uh, luckily, it's not smudging. Now, the good thing about using microns is that um, microns and fine liners they dry a little bit faster than using a crow quill, uh, the dip pins, or or a brush. So you can work a little bit faster. Okay, here's a little bit of a texture detail. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of texture up here. Not texture, but more so. And some of these lines, those cracks, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a tone right next to it. Okay, it's also with this one, a little bit of tone. Just follow that line. And then I'm inking right through the line. Okay, I still want to make this whole nose a little bit darker. I need that shadow to come out a lot more. So I'm going to start very lightly here. And then go all the way in. Okay, I'm going slower because I don't want to overlap over that, um, that bone over there. Okay, I still want it to be darker. I'm going to cross hatch this direction. I still continue going through what I had originally. Okay, uh, I still want it to be darker, not dark enough. So I'm going to start here, even though it's black. I'm still going to continue adding it. And then while I'm using this micron, I don't really press down really hard. I'm just gliding the pin across. Um, some artists, they'll be drawing for a very long time. They'll just go ahead and uh, press these microns really hard until the tip of it just disappears. Uh, if you can use these, uh, if you can like draw and ink with these, they, they will, they will last for a very long time. Not only that, you can also refill the inks for, so for, for those of you who are watching this video for the very first time and don't know how to refill inks, check out some of my videos. Uh, look for the most viewed video that I have on YouTube. That video, uh, describes and I demonstrate how I refill these, uh, micron markers. So check that video out. Uh, I'll add a link maybe on the top corner, uh, like right over, over here. Uh, so. Um, if I remember to add it back on a little bit uh, later. Okay, and I'm just going to continue adding more shadows and values. Okay, so, so far so good. It's turning out. Uh, I'm also going to, I'm going to push this bone further back. In order for me to push it back, I need a lot of hatching. Right now, if it's bright, it, you don't really see that it's behind. So for me to push it behind, I'm just going to go in there and add a little bit of hatching. Right here, you'll see some of the bumps and bones. I'm just going to start adding those textures in here. Okay, just one underneath each teeth, I add a little bit of shading. Not, not shading, but um, hatch lines. And as it gets further back, they become darker. And that's when I'm going to go in and cross hatching it. Because the, the bone structure here blocks the, the light and it casts a shadow. So here I'm just going to add a shadow this direction. And I'll go all the way across. Okay, I'm going to also do the same for this side just to push this back a little bit. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker. So I'm going to hatch these lines. Okay, I'm using my wrist like a compass to keep those lines uh, spaced evenly. Okay, I'm going to darken up here. So I'm going to start pushing this whole bone a little bit further back. Okay. I'm going to Cross hatch them over here. And I do look at the reference photo just to see what direction uh, the, the hatching and cross hatching is going. Okay, just cross hatch here. Okay, some more this direction. Okay, now I'm going to start cross hatching. So there's a slight angle that's pretty close to the original angle, just to give it a little bit of a tone. Okay, and then now I'm going to start hatching this direction. Okay, 
Okay, and then later, see, the more I add, the more I see that the bottom needs more. So I'm just going to go in there and add more to the bottom. Just to push that further back. Okay, I'm going to hatch this way, and then I'm going to hatch this direction. Okay, space them evenly. Now, how many of you are watching this video and you want to be an inker or you want to learn how to draw fossils or learn how to use a micron? Please comment down below so I know, so I have an idea of um, how many people are viewing this uh, video and is enjoying it, uh, hit, hit that like button so I know that you're enjoying it. Um, if I see enough responses and I know that people are enjoying it, I can make the same type of videos. Uh, so hopefully some of you are enjoying these videos. Okay, I'm going to start cross-hatching this way. Now, the more I feed into that back bone over there, the more this bone goes into uh, underneath the head. Okay. And again, it's just a lot of hatch lines and cross hatching. And this is almost like the basketing technique where I'm starting to go different directions and I'm not going all the way across. And I'm just pushing the shadows. This area is really dark. So I'm going to push that and cross hatch at different angles. This, and I'm also going to make this really dark over here. Okay, maybe really dark underneath the teeth. So I'll do a cross hatching right over here. Okay, and then now we have this side. I'm going to do some cross hatching going this direction, some longer, some shorter, just to have the, the top part separate from the bottom part. Okay, and then here I'm going to cross hatch this direction. We're going to maybe go this direction. A shorter distance, but I want to end that in the right place. There we go. Okay, well, we'll take a look at my reference photo. Uh, I want this area to be darker. Uh, I'm going to cross hatch this way. Just to push that a little bit darker, I'm also going to cross hatch. Uh, I'll find a direction that I haven't gone yet, and I'm going to go there. Okay, what other areas? Uh, I'm going to work on the hatching on this side. Okay, I need a little bit more shadow. I really, so even the reference photo is kind of light. I'm, I really want to push this back darker. Okay, it's because it's not as dark as I want it to be. So I'm just going to go in there and start doing some more basketing. Just to push that back. And I want this technique to be very clean and soft. I don't want um, things to look uh, out of order, like out of control. I want it to be clean. Okay, and then some cross hatching in this direction. I'm just going to give this all a little bit of a tone here. And then some of this go this direction. So it's starting to take form, which is turning out uh, pretty good. Pushing that back. And we'll go this direction. Okay. okay now I'm going to start working on some of the bone structure uh, of some of these shadows. I'm still using the same pin, same size pin. I mean, this one actually is going to last uh, a pretty good while um i will work on some of the smaller areas later i want this area to be really dark really dark so i'm just going to start hatching this direction okay add a little bit darker with a different direction if you go the same direction it just becomes kind of messy but if you go in there and 
darken up uh, going into one direction it looks a little bit neater I want this to be cleaner over here so I'm going to start attaching this side on the bottom okay can I have some of this come up this way okay so that's there's that bone I'm gonna now we'll work on some of the teeth okay I'm gonna make this a little bit dark over here I, I really want this to be really dark and just go in there and basket and cross hatch maybe uh, let's find I'll, I'll turn it just to find the right angle for me to hatch okay so far so good okay I'm gonna start hatching going up towards And I do decide how long I want those lines to be and how short. Okay, what other areas? I want this to have a little bit of a gray tone right over here. So I'm going to start adding that line texture right here. And the shadow part, um, we want this to be a little bit gray. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, hatch lines over here. In the areas that's a little bit darker, I'll just go back in there and I cross hatch those little, little bit. And it looks like there's a little bit of shading over here or hatching or cross hatching. A little bit of texture. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I'm going to start adding more. Go around here a little bit uh, because it's rounded. It's not a sharp edge. So I'm just going in there and we're going to go this direction. You make sure I space them evenly. So all the pencils that were underneath, I don't even really need to follow them anymore. Um, I can actually wait for all the ink to dry and then just erase it or just complete the drawing all together and then go back in there with a neat eraser and lightly erase some of those uh, lines. Cross hatching here, there's a little bit of shadow here. I'm gonna darken up here, cross hatch here. Okay, I'm also gonna cross hatch this bit just to give it a little bit of a tone okay there's a really strong light source here so i'm with that light source i'm just gonna start hatching this direction okay and then i'm going to continue figuring out where it's going to be darker so over here is a really dark i'm going to add that shadow here so I went a little bit too fast and those lines started to break up so I'm going to go a little bit slower uh, the faster you draw those lines the more chances of those lines breaking up and I don't really want them to break up so I've slowed down cross hatch up to here all the way to here okay I'm going to cross hatch some of this Okay, I'm going to give this a tone all over here. So this will be a really bright area. So I'm going to go this direction. And then I'm going to connect those lines. See, and then just some gray tones, just a little bit of grays over here. And then I'm going to go this direction on this side. Let me make sure it's in focus. So I am looking at the reference photo to look at different tones. It's just like uh, you're painting watercolors or you're painting acrylics or you're you know coloring in markers. You're looking at the different tones. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at the different shade of black and different shade of browns. And I'm mimicking it with um, just, just microns. Okay, we we'll make this a little bit darker on this side. Okay, uh, the socket over here is a little bit darker, so I'm just going to add some cross hatching over there. Here, and then go this direction, and then that direction, different directions to give it a tone a little bit here. Okay, and we add a little bit of line texture on that line, so it doesn't look like it's just a line over there. Okay. A little bit of grays over here. Okay, 
Okay, there's also some tones over here, so I'm just going to follow some of those. Yeah, so basketing, uh, if I was going to eat this with a crow quill, it would probably take a little bit longer. If I was going to eat this with a brush, even longer. Um, there's also repeatograph pins, um, but that sometimes clog. I, I only use repeatograph. Re repeatograph pins are these. These are repeatograph pins. Uh, they do ink... Um, like dead lines, like what I'm doing with the micron, uh, but that um, is more fluid. Sometimes there's there's a chance that uh, those uh, lines will bleed, so I, I don't uh, use uh, repeatographs for that. Uh, I use repeatographs for inking anything that requires a straight edge, uh, like a ruler or a template. Okay, I'm going to ink the bottom side of this, separating the bone from 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 the tooth okay there's a little bit of shadow on this side okay so uh, some of the shadows here and then i'm looking everywhere to see if i'm missing anything uh some shadows here with those spots over there so i'm going to create those spots Right here, just give this part a little bit of a tone. Here, give this a tone. Some of these little spots that I drew in, give those a tone, like like dents in the ivory or the, the bone. And then after I do those dents, I go back in there and I cross hatch those dents in there. Okay, uh, it doesn't have to be in completely inside. Uh, you see how this is longer and shorter just to give it a little bit of gradation on the texture. You don't want to just do like um, like a circle unless it is like a little circle. But what I'll do is I'll have some lines longer and some bigger just to have a gradation. Okay, I'm just gonna darken up here a little bit more, give this uh, more of a shadow here. And some of this, I see some shadows coming out uh, this way, so I'm going to make those a little bit longer. Okay, some textures here. Yeah, so pen and ink does take a while. Um, like, I don't know how long it's been already. Uh, I'm doing this, uh, the drawing, the penciling, all in one sitting. And, like, time just flies. Like, by the time I'm done, it's probably, like, a good couple of hours maybe um but it is it is very fun it's very therapeutic when i'm inking and um like drawing like i can actually do this i actually i do do this all day um like this yeah for so if you're still watching this thank you for watching this um again check out my website is waldenwongart.com uh, on my website, there's a lot of things that you can look at. There's um, a blog, uh, there's a store where you can order prints, as well as some of my original art that I've done for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, as well as other publishers. Uh, there's also a news link uh, that talks about some of the news that, um, like some of the books that I've worked on that's coming out or that's in stores. You can check that out. There's also a video links where you can see uh, this video as well as a lot of other uh, videos that I've done on YouTube. Um, uh, that website that I have, waldenwallart.com, uh, it also shows all my other social media. So if you're interested in looking at those or subscribing to my other social media, check those ch uh, channels out. A uh, lot of lot of cool information. That's almost like um, my website that shows all the stuff that I uh, that I have. Okay, right here I'm going to start hatching. I want this to be a little bit thicker. I'm going to go in here and just give this a little bit of a cross hatch. Okay, I'm going to look at this. I want this tone to be a little darker because there's a little bit of tone there. So I'm going to cross hatch over here. Again, you don't have to cross hatch and fill inside. I do space some lines further out and then I do move them around a little bit, like the distance over here. Okay, I'm going to cross hatch over here, give this a darker tone. And then take your time on this. Uh, don't rush, um, just enjoy the process. Um, art is the process of. Uh, creating the art that's fun uh, once you're done with the art it's really not much fun you just move on to the next piece but here i'm gonna add some cross hatching right here 
And so far, I'm pretty happy with how everything is turning out. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, creating tones, but I think I want to add a few more texture lines just to give it more gray tones. Okay, and then we're going to have this part. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of tones over here. And, and I'm basically going whatever direction I want, want to go. Uh, I remember when I first started learning how to ink, um, I would always ask of some of um, the people that are critiquing me, which direction am I supposed to go? Um, how do I know which line is thicker? How do I know, um, you know, what if I'm doing it correctly? You just, you just kind of do it. After a while, you kind of understand how everything works, and then you just go and ink everything accordingly. I still want this to be a little bit darker. I'm going to do cross hatching this direction, and then a little bit this direction, just a little bit smaller strokes. There's some of those extra white lines. I just go back in there and cover those up. So some of the white lines, I'm going to go in here and cover it up. Go in here, like this. Okay, and some of the teeth, uh, there's a little bit of tones in there. So I'm just going to go in there and create those tones by adding some hash lines, um, some cross hash lines. We don't want those teeth to be too clean and white because they've been around for a while already. Okay, I'm going to cross hatch here. Okay, so far so good. Uh, very clean. Okay, some more. Process. Now I'm going to work on some of this area, some tones. Uh, there's also some tones here, let's not forget. Sometimes I'm so focused on one area that I forget about another area. And then I, when I do find the other area, it's like, oh, awesome, great. I get to do more cross hatching. I get to do more hatch lines. I get to do, uh, start separating more uh, tones. Okay, so right here, I'm going to go a different direction. And we add a little bit of tones here. And also here, just a little bit of shadow, just to make this kind of stick out a little bit. Okay, so right over here. Again, every line that you draw has to have a reason for, for B that you shouldn't shouldn't just draw lines for the sake of drawing lines or hatching in lines. Uh, every line has to have a reason, okay? Because with art, every line that you put there, um, there's a reason for putting it there. I, so don't just always uh, scribble stuff in for the sake of completing it. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So if I make it darker, I would add a little bit more cross hatching. Okay, I'm going to make push this a little bit. So I'm going to go this direction. Okay, and then this part is a little bit thicker over here. So I'm going to start uh, crossing, cross hatching this direction. Actually, I think I'm going to go in there and pull all these out a little bit longer. There you go. So I can darken up underneath that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go in this direction. Okay. Yeah, that bone bone over there. I'm going to make some of these a little bit longer. A shadow. Okay. Now cross hatch this direction. Okay. So far so good. I'm liking how it turns is turning out so far. Okay. Let me see what other areas I can make darker. I'm going to make this part a little bit darker. Okay, this part a little bit darker. And I'm just looking at the reference photo again to find out what areas I can make dark and what areas I can skip. Okay, maybe this one, there's a shadow, there's a light source. You know, this part a little bit darker. I'm going to cross hatch here. And then I'm going to soften it up right over here. Okay, and there's a tone over here, so I'm going to catch over here. And then I'll cross hatch just to give it a light fade. Okay, make some of this form. Yeah, so far so good. Let's see what else do I need. Uh, I, I I need some more 
a work over on this side. So I'm going to start hatching this area in, hatching this, these little dark spots and textures. Yeah, there's a lot of dots in some of these. So I'm just going to hatch in some of this and then kind of go in there and soften up those lines. I may have to go in there and do like three times cross hatching, three times cross hatching and basketing just to make those spots a little bit softer. Okay, I'm going to go this direction. Okay, I'm going to add some shadows over here. Okay, I'm going to darken up. I'm going to darken up going this direction. Okay, I'm going to add some more tones over here so it completes this side. And maybe a little bit more going in this direction. Again, they're all controlled uh, lines. Every line that I've added here is uh, controlled lines. All I'm doing is just making certain lines darker and certain lines, uh, certain lines like more lines in certain areas and less lines in another area just to push the shadows a little bit if the shadow looks too too much i'll just go in there and i'll add more lines so i don't see any of that tic-tac-toe pattern okay and next i'm going to start adding i'm going to start adding some of these dots those little dots that's everywhere. Um, so actually I'm gonna go in and start using the number two and adding a little bit more thinner lines for the cross hatching. Just a few areas here and there to separate. Okay, so this teeth is not completely white. I'm gonna go in there and add some shadows here. And on each teeth that has a little bit of gray, I'm just going to use this one to hatch it in. See, this line is a little bit thinner. So it's creating another, another gradual tone. And we do that for all the teeth. And let's see, this one, just gonna hatch this one a little bit longer. Okay, that's this teeth, and then a little bit on this side. And then I'm gonna start cross hatching these areas. Again, don't press down too hard. Uh, control your brush, you're just gliding the micron or the fine liner directly on top. Okay, looks like I need some shadows over here. I'm going to start cross hatching some of these teeth over here. Towards the center. Yeah, so this cross hatching and this cross, ha um, this hatching technique is just going in there and adding tones. Uh, just imagine yourself as a computer printer and you're just going in there and you're just printing up these lines. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to cross hatch some of this to give it more of a side. Okay, and we're going to do some cross hatching on this one. Some more tones here. So it's not just one one solid, only one hatch line over there. Okay, I want to add some of this. Okay, any areas that looks kind of off to me, I just go back in there and add some more basketing on top. And we'll take another look. 
see this one looks off to me uh, too much so I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna cross hatch cross hatch a little bit more uh, in a different direction and then right here a little bit more this direction there's some of these darker texture I'm just gonna hatch those in And some of these black spots, I'm just going to go in there and kind of fade it out a little bit. Okay, this top part, I'm going to give this a bit of a tone. I'll go up this direction. Okay, and then I'll cross hatch this direction. I'll just make longer lines. Okay, underneath here, I'm just going to contour. You see, I find a direction that I haven't uh, started. And then I'll just cash these in like this. And that's that one doesn't look good. I'm gonna go in here. There we go. Okay, this contours in. I want to add the shadow over here. And then I'm gonna start separating the top shadow to the bottom shadow. Like this. Go a different direction. Hash those lines in, go another direction, hash these lines, go a different direction. Uh, as long as you can just turn it and have different directions. Okay, some of these, I want to soften up these guys. The two, the, these kind of stand out too much. I want to soften them, so I'm just going to add a little bit of textures uh, going out. A little bit more chunky lines. Basketing. Okay, so far I have the majority of the, the skull inked in. Um, it's just going back in and make it darker. So I'm going to use the 0.8 just to do all the textures first. Uh, the the, the uh, 0.8 over here, just to do some of those uh, dots. Okay, so I'll look at all those dots and I just do random stippling. So these are stipple dots. And I'll look at every area that has a chunk of them and I'll just stipple them in. And this is this is the easy part. You're just stippling. Even if you're not uh, if it's not in the reference photo, you just go in there and just stipple to create that uh, dot texture. Okay, I'm gonna make some of these lines, just to pull in some of those. Okay, some textures here, a lot of dots. A lot of little dots, but these are control dots. I'm looking at the reference uh, image and I'm just putting those dots there. Yeah, there's some dark spots, some dark spots over here. So I'm, some dots are bigger, some dots are smaller. They're not random dots. Got a lot of dots over here, a little bit underneath the these spots over here and any areas I see that needs some form of dots I just added in there some bigger again some smaller looks like there's some scratches over here so I'm gonna add those in make this line thicker this one looks like I'm making freckles a okay, bigger dot over here uh, this line Okay, this, this has a little bit of dot texture. Get some here, stippling some of these. Okay, and also back here, I'm gonna add some dots just to help push this further back. Okay, some dots in between the teeth. Back here. Some dots over here. There's dots everywhere. 
this this almost can be almost random but I, I actually am deciding where is darker and where there's more dots and where there's less dots I'm not following every every dot that's there I'm just using it as a reference to decide where I'm going to add some spots some larger spots and some smaller spots I need to add more um, rendering over here later. Later, okay, I'm just gonna darken up these lines for the crack. Okay, oh yeah, the, this little back fin over here. There's a lot going on, so I'm just gonna draw some squiggly lines over here. The outline around here just give this a little bit of a texture. Some dots over here. Heavy dot. Okay. Now come back in. Oh, there's a crack there. I'm just going to add some more lines here. There's a big spot over here. Yeah, I wonder how many, how, how long I've been inking this or drawing this already. Um, probably when you guys watch the video, you you look on the bottom, you'll see how long this video is. I'm gonna have to uh, continue doing some of these dots. We're almost getting there. Some dots over here. Yeah, so far, so far as we go. So we have that bone over here. Let me add a few more and we can break up some of this line over here. Make some of these longer. Okay, let's get darkened up. The spot over here. So far so good. I'm just gonna keep inking it a lot more texture over here. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly, add a little spots, look at the reference photo, uh, look back, look at the reference photo, just add some more dots. And there's always a pattern there, so I'm gonna try to create a pattern, like little circles. And it's just a lot of stippling. This effect, this effect is called stippling. Simply is like a lot of dots. Okay, more dots. I'm going to create more dots around this bone structure. Just to make this bone kind of stick out a little bit. Okay, there's a little bit more dots around here. Just darken up there. Okay, there we have. Okay, I'm gonna add some cross hatching. Let's grab my number two. Let's use number two and add a little bit of tone over here. I'll try not to do the tone all the way to the outside. I want to create a halo. Halo is like a not really a halo, but I don't want any of the cross hatch to go outside, so it will separate this bone from the other bone. Some more hatch lines here. I'll leave a little bit of a white outline around here. That helps separate. You know, try to break up any patterns I see by turning it. And a little bit of uh, texture over here. OK, 
Okay, so we had some hash lines over here, just to make this kind of look well, like it's going out. Okay, some shadows over here. Okay, this area is a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go in here and use that point two to add a little bit of shadows on this side. Okay, we're going to add some more hatch lines. Let's see, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out already. I'm just going to darken up some other areas to make it darker. Okay, I think I'm almost done. Okay, I'm just going to... Darken up this bone. Next time we go this direction. And then leave a little bit of a halo on the bottom. Separate. I don't go all the way across. Okay. And then maybe hatch this. Let me find a direction that I haven't gone yet. Uh, looks like this direction. This direction. No, maybe this direction. And break up some of these lines, some spots in there. Some smaller dots. Okay, I'm going to put this away because I don't need this anymore. And then I'm going to zoom in so we can continue seeing some of the rendering I'm doing. And here I'm just looking at any areas that I need to push. Okay, I'm also, I also have a white gel pen. Let me see if I have my white gel pen. And if I want certain areas to pop out, like for example, this teeth, I'm just gonna separate this with a white line. Okay, this is called a halo in comic book terms. Right over there. So that teeth just pops forward. Okay, we'll create a little white line over here. Okay. Uh, and it, since I'm already doing the white lines there, I may as well do all the other areas that has that little bit of a white line. Okay, and then here, these teeth, I'm also going to do it with this one. So this one pops that teeth forward. So I'm going to do it for all the teeth. Just just to be fair with all the other teeth so they don't feel um, left out. So I give them also a, a little bit of a halo. Even though they don't need it. Okay, this part here, which is kind of meshing together, I'll use my gel pen and I'll slowly remove some of the lines. I mean, I could have gone in there and not inked those areas, um, which I should have. But then after inking it, I decided, oh, I think I, I want that little halo. I wasn't going to halo it uh, earlier, but I figured if I halo it now, it just makes it uh, look a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to start separating these areas, those little bit of that line here to pop that forward. Okay, so I'm drawing with a white pin. See what areas I can pop forward. Um, so far, so good. Good, good. Okay, so a little, some spots here. And then some of the, the bone, the cracks here, I'll just do a little white line just to separate. So those cracks stands out a little bit better. Okay, and we have this crack here with a little bit of the white line. Okay, there, there's the bone structure. I'm gonna grab my pin and this 08, and then I'm gonna erase, erase everything first, make sure it's dried. I'll grab my knee eraser and we erase all the pencils very lightly. Uh, when I erase, I put my hand here uh, and then I erase in between my pointing finger and my thumb. So this way you won't crunch up uh, your your artwork if you're if you're drawing on a paper that you know like a little thinner paper like this so i'll put my hand here and that you race between my hands so this way you, you you don't accidentally do this okay go here you race in between my fingers so i don't uh, scrunch scrunch up the paper the artwork and i'll twist it a little bit i get a cleaner side and i'll continue racing Right here, erase all the pencil lines. 
this. I also have a vinyl eraser that I can erase. That will probably erase a little bit faster. Okay, I'm gonna erase some of this. Erase that extra pencil lid. Uh, so the vinyl eraser that I have is a Fractus. Again, um, I'll add links below this video description. So for any of the art supplies you want, you can add it to, you can order through my Amazon affiliate links. Uh, I do get a little bit of a commission. So thank you very much for ordering from my Amazon affiliate links. Um, there's also a link to all the supplies that I use. So if you're interested in seeing some of the other art supplies that I use, um, you can order the same uh, on my Amazon uh, affiliate links. Uh, again, all those will be underneath the video description. Can you erase this? Okay, so there's the bone structure. Uh, as an artist, I can keep going in there and uh, drawing more and more, but I just, I'm just think I'm gonna call it uh, a day, and I'm just gonna sign my name, uh, sign my name very close to the artwork, uh, maybe right over here. There, and then there you have it. That's the drawing of the dire wolf uh, skeleton right over here. Let's check it out. Let's go one more time with all the cross hatching. And there you have it. That's the ink piece of the dye wolf that I used this reference that I searched up online and I finished that piece like right over here. Check it out. Okay, so if you're interested in any of the art tools that I've used, uh, all the links are below this video description. Those are my Amazon links. Anything you order, I get a little bit of a commission. So thank you very much for that. And again, check out my website. My website is waldemarart.com. A lot of the fun things that you can look at, uh, news, um, events, um, store, and all that good stuff. And also check out my Patreon. My Patreon is patreon.com slash waldemarart. And on my Patreon, there's different tiers of so showing support, as well as mentorship. Uh, if you're interested in uh, mentorship with penciling, inking, coloring, lettering all of that good stuff so check me out there so until next time hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something about how to draw and ink bones and this is the final piece